What happened there? Okay, now we're better. Now we are definitely better. I don't know why it switched my default microphone on me. It must be because I switched my PC. So, <laughs> sorry about that. But yeah, hey everyone, welcome back to the stream today. We're going to be answering questions about medical billing and coding and all of those questions that you guys still have about the 2022 changes since there's a lot of information going on there. Let me know if you guys can hear me okay now. I know there's usually a couple seconds delay. So it should be all right now. There we go. Say everything's working all right now. I don't know. Like I said, the, the, the other thing I'm going to warn you guys ahead of time, um, for some reason, my camera keeps freezing and we're still trying to figure out what the heck it is. I might have to upgrade some gear, uh, but I still have my backup camera if that happens. And basically, if I unplug it and replug it in, works all over again. I don't know. So we'll see how it goes for the stream today. But yeah, I'm so excited to talk about the 2022 changes because I know there's just like so many cool questions happening about that. Um, so yeah, so hey, hey, Kimberly Williams, good to see you here and Maria and Huma. So yeah, um, the great thing about the 2022 changes is it pretty much everything's updated now on the website. So you can kind of get a feeling of what's going on there. But if you guys have questions like preliminary, definitely let me know in the chat because what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna show you some of the stuff right on the website because it is updated now. And I know the CPC is the big one. A lot of people are planning on taking their CPC in 2022 and I'm so excited for that because you know, I love, I love when things that were difficult for me get recognized and then our future coders and those that are taking the exams now, like have it a little bit easier, not that the exam itself is easier, but it's easier in the fact that it's not as time consuming instead of feeling like it's taking your entire day. It's only taking a four hour chunk. A four hour chunk is a lot more manageable than five hours and 40 minutes, especially when you have to tack on that extra time. Like, book checks and, you know, the, the commute back and forth, like it just makes it so much easier, so much easier from a time perspective. The complexity of the exam is exactly the same, but let's check it out right here. So if you're interested in seeing what has changed with any of the exams, and I'll, I'll start with the CPC for 2022, what you can do is you go up to certification and you go here, we're going to start with the CPC. All right. So at the very bottom is where they give you this exam breakdown. And one of the questions that I've been getting a lot is the multiple choice because of this case studies. They said, oh, there's 10 case studies on this. So if you look, let me see if I can find it right here. I'm gonna do a control F as long as my keyboard starts functioning right too. There we go. That's the other thing I'm having issues with. I don't know why I spent so much money on this new computer when my peripherals are acting so funny. Maybe it's because I have just too many of them plugged in, but yeah. So it says here that the CPC exam is a test of medical coding proficiency consisting of a hundred multiple choice questions. So all of the questions are multiple choice, including those 10 case studies. Now, uh, if we look down here, it still says four hours, it says four hours now, still 70% of the questions to pass. So just a little bit of quick math. If you have 100 questions and you need a 70% to pass, that means you need to get at least 70 questions correct in order to pass the examination. And that can be any 70. It doesn't mean uh, you have to get 70% in each section, 70 total across the board. Everything is weighted the same. So that question that you have about medical terminology has one point to it. The case study also has one point to it. So that's an important test strategy to know about because if it's going to take you two seconds to answer that med term question, it's better use of your time to get that and get the one point for that than it is to waste three, four minutes on that case study that has the exact same point value to it. So let's go back to our, our, our look at the website here. Uh, still available to take online. Currently, it looks like the CPC is only the only AAPC examination available online. So that is in process of changing, but I can't even begin to imagine how much of a workload has to go into converting so many different certification exams to a secure online test environment. So so we have our 100 multiple choice questions and down here at the very bottom is where it gives you the exam breakdown. So if you looked at this in 2021 or prior, 
these are the exact same things. They basically just shrunk how many questions there are for each. So in the 10,000 series, there is going to be, let's see, six questions. 20,000 series of CPT, there is going to be six questions, six on the 30,000. The 40,000, also six questions. Uh, 50,000, six questions. 60,000 series of CPT, there will be six questions. There's going to be six questions on evaluation and management. Now, ENM did change a little bit from 20. 21 prior. So those questions about office and outpatient visits, I do believe they now have you score those out. The ones for some of the others, I think they might still give you the level of history exam and medical decision making, but I think those office outpatient visits, they now have you score them out. They don't tell you like the number of data and the number of risk and you just figure it out and figure out the level. They tell you uh, they, they basically give you kind of a, a more so a note to score and you have to abstract how many data elements were reviewed and what the level of the risk is to come up with that office outpatient visit level. And if you have training material for 2021 or 2022, they'll they'll to walk you through that. So that's some some great materials for that. So. I have a question here. It says case study questions are MQR, right? I'm not sure what you mean by MQR. Medical coding questions? Is that what you mean, MQR? Um, we'll talk about those case studies. We're going to talk about those case studies. So anesthesia, we have four questions. Radiology, six questions. Six on lab and path. Six medicine, med term. Um, we have four questions on med term, right? Four med term questions. Oh, be good if I got you over here. Four med term questions. Uh, four anatomy. Five questions on ICD 10 CM. Um, Hick picks level two. There's three questions. You could literally not even know Hick picks and miss all of those three questions and probably still pass your exam because there's only three questions on Hick picks. It's not a huge portion of the CPC exam. There are some questions just in regards to the coding guidelines. So, seven questions, they're just testing you on your coding guidelines. Probably a good amount of them are going to be ICD-10-CM guidelines, like you're sequencing things or maybe even like modifier usage, maybe even a little bit of bundling or just kind of questions about the guidelines themselves, modifier use, parenthetical notes, etc. Marissa's taking her COC. That's a tough one. I find, you know, the interesting thing about I found about the COC is... It seems like the people that just go directly into the COC program do a lot better than the people who are CPCs and then go into COC. They seem to struggle just a little bit more, at least from, from the people that I've kind of interacted with that. I actually just got uh, the COC curriculum licensed, so I'm starting to put together a COC program, but I like to concentrate for at least for my online sales because I have so many beginner people and I'd rather kind of turf them off to, to some reliable sources instead of having to, to boundary set and navigate and interview all of the entry level people that, that potentially come in. I kind of concentrate more for what I do online for, for people who like already have a kind of a baseline knowledge and want to get an additional certification or some continuing education. Uh, but I just licensed the COC curriculum, so I'm still kind of putting that all together, but I want to do the accelerated courses where they're for the people who have their CPC and then also want to get their COC. But I've just got a lot, man, I got a lot going on right now. I'm helping out a friend with a, a 1099 gig and just so much going on. And right now is the busy season because it seems like, you know, everyone who who uh, wants to, you know, find their new career in 2022 is searching up medical coding and then they find me and they have all these questions. So there's just a lot going on, uh, which is exciting for me and exciting. Another thing that's exciting for me is when you smash that like button, give me a good thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell, follow me online. And if you want to join channel membership, hey, that's there as well. So let's, yeah, so Alicia, I'm, I'm getting there. I want to, I want to, we're, we're working, we're working our way through. I'm going to talk about these case studies. I'm going to talk about these case studies. You guarantee it. But it, by the way, though, have you guys know my hair is fading? I went to go and get all these cute unicorn colors in my hair. And then they're like, we only have semi-permanent. And I'm like, you're kidding me. So it's already, already, it looks cute, but it's like, man, I was only, I was only super unicorny for like a hot minute there. 
So coding guidelines, compliance and regulatory is three questions. And then this here says it's a new section and it's called cases. And they are 10 cases that are going to test you on your ICD 10 CM, your CPT and HCPCS. So what does that mean when we say cases? So the interesting thing about this, the cases, the 10 cases, the CPC exam has always had cases in it. They've just been kind of co-mingled with all the other stuff. So you might have had one case in your 20,000 series, one case in your 30,000 series. And what they did now is they kind of just took the 10 cases and went, let's concentrate these towards the back because these are the ones that instructors tell everyone like, hey, these are difficult and you might want to skip them and come and do them at the end. Because again, that one, that one midterm question where they're asking you what um, a cardiology means is going to have that same weight as a long case study. So you don't want to waste all, you want to get that one point for that quick question versus spending, you know, five minutes on a case study. Now it's just easier because they're all at the end of the exam and you can kind of wait until the end and then work on those. So if you got everything else right, even if you missed those last 10 case studies, you could still, if everything else was right, get a 90%, right? So those are all now concentrated at the end. They're easier to, to focus on when you're ready to do those, those more lengthy case studies. And so we've always had case studies. We've just kind of not called them case studies. Now, here's, here's what I want you to think about, though. If you have curriculum right now that you're working on or have been working on since 2021. So this is my, if you have this book, this is golden for you right now. So this is the CPC training book. This is the practical application workbook. And if you open up the practical application workbook, let me move over here real quick. Let me put my face in there so you can see me. So if you move over here, what's in this practical application workbook? Case studies. It is literally case, case. These are, this is not the exact cases that are going to be in the exam, but very, very similar type of structure. Now, the only difference is these, they don't give you multiple choice for the practical application workbooks. In the actual exam, they will all be multiple choice. So you'll have four selections that you can pick from when you're coding these cases. But they're, and I apologize, my nails are ter terrible right now. I haven't had a chance to even go through them. But um, that this is going to be really what's going to help you out is things like the practical application workbook, because these are all case studies. They are very, very similar to what you will see on the exam. Again, the exam itself, though, will be multiple choice. So what I would do if I was going through one of these case studies, the first thing, very, very first thing you want to do is read the read the answers and the question. Because there are situations like when I took my CPMA exam for the first time, there were some cases that were like a two page E&M note. And then when I went to read the question, it just said, OK, so what are your audit findings on this note? Is it A, there's no date of service? And I'd look at it and go, no, nope, there's a date of service on it. OK, B, it's not signed by the provider. Oh yeah, it's not signed by the provider. I barely read anything on that two page note, but I was able to answer that question because I could see that that's what I was ruling out there. So definitely work on some of these case studies. I believe even the practice examinations have case studies in them that you can't buy like a, an exclusive practice exam that's just the case studies. But look for those ones that say case. I think there might even be some, and I don't have the 2022 materials yet. I don't know if I'm supposed to, and I just haven't gotten them, or if I'm not supposed to get them till I renew my instructor license. But I think there's even some case studies within some of the other materials as well. And even the step-by-step uh, -step books, I think, have some longer cases in them. That would be great for practicing for getting that those case studies kind of down. But that's what I would concentrate on, making sure that you kind of hold those case studies till till the last, that you have everything filled in, right? Because if you if you fill something in, you've got a one in four chance. If you fill nothing in, you've got a zero in four chance. So that's what I would do as far as the case studies. They're very similar to the stuff that's already in your study materials. And if you're going through a school with like the step-by-step -step books or some other curriculum, you know, anything that's basically a note or an operative report or something, that is going to be very similar to what you will see with the case studies. They are multiple choice. So let me see here in the chat if we have 
<sighs> ASMR Cheech is coming in here. During the exam, are you able to highlight and jot stuff down if you need to? So in the in-person exam, yes, you are allowed to bring highlighters. You are allowed to write things down. The one exception is, where's my, why is my, my alert box not coming up? Oop, there we go. Hey, so the one exception, the one exception to the jotting stuff down is you can't write anything down and then remove it from the test area and take it with you. So if you have like a scrap paper or you want to write in your booklet, like all of that has to get handed into the proctors and submitted. You can't take anything that you've written down out with you because the philosophy behind that is they don't want you bringing in scrap paper uh, writing down all of the test questions and then leaving them and like being like, hey, I'm going to sell this questions on the internet because or share them with someone because that would allow them to cheat on the exam. So yeah, um, with with the in person exams, you basically get a booklet, you get a test booklet. And then you have a answer sheet, the bubble grid, they call it where you just bubble in ABCD, etc. So you can write in your test booklet as much as you want, whatever you want, you can highlight I found it helpful when I took the COC exam to have multiple color highlighters because there were some questions that were maybe like a lesion where I had different types of lesions or different types of closure. So it was good to like go, okay, you know, the lesion on the arm was two centimeters and it had a, a 2.5 closure. And I would like highlight that in green to know that was all one lesion. Um, so it's just kind of mentally, com uh, mentally, differentiate some of the different locations anatomically and size wise and stuff. So you can take highlighters with you. You can highlight and write whatever you want in your book. They're just, they're not going to grade off of the book. They're going to grade off of your answer grid. Uh, what I understand for the online exams, and I've not taken any of them online because I already have my CPC and that's the only one online right now. Uh, I have heard some people that they've taken like dry erase markers this is a highlight. Oh, here we go. Here I got a dry erase marker. I've not tried this out. I'm going to try this out live now. But I've had some people say that they took their dry erase marker and to do their process of elimination on their on their online exam, they just drew on their monitor. You are allowed a whiteboard, um, but I have heard some people say that they just drew on the monitor. Let me see if I can, if this actually works. I'm going to do it on my old monitor in case it yeah, so my dry erase marker, it looks like is writing on my monitor, okay? As long as you don't have a touch screen, I guess that'll be fine. And yeah, erasing right, right off. So that is an option, I believe. Again, I, it might depend on, on your proctor for that day, but I believe that people have said that they've just used their process of elimination with a dry erase marker right on their monitor. And it, yeah, it's erasing right off. <laughs> that is handy dandy. Handy, handy, dandy. Look how smooth my desk is right now because I spent an hour cleaning in here before I went live. Do I think four hours is enough time for the exam? Absolutely. Absolutely it is. Let me see if I can even do some math. So do you actually have a couple more seconds now than you used to for the exam? Let's see, where's my calculator? Calculator, okay. So if we, can I do this over here? So if we have four hours and there's 60 minutes in an hour. So that's 240 minutes divided by a hundred questions. So you have 2.4 minutes per question. And again, some of those questions are going to be quick. They're just going to be like little med term. Um, some of them are just going to be looking up a diagnosis code. So, you know, if you've read the white paper that the AAPC put out, it has a lot of great information about how they had independent organizations analyze shortening the exam. And they found out that it was extraordinarily comparable to the longer form exam from a difficulty level, from a thought process, you know, everything really has remained the same except for the length of time. So Jamie King saying, no, you can use a whiteboard and you have to keep it in the whiteboard. Yeah. So I don't know if that's answering in regards to the monitor, if they've maybe changed thoughts on that. But yeah, so you are allowed a whiteboard for the online exams. 
Uh, you have to show the proctor the whiteboard that you there's it's clear before you start. And then when you finish, everything is wiped off. You have to show it to the monitor too as well. Yeah, with the online exam, um, it can be it can be a little touchy too. Um, not everyone's familiar with some of the equipment. So like the the camera that I'm on right now, like you can't have a your laptop camera. You it has to be like an external camera. So like the camera that I have here on the side is on a podium. So if I needed to move it around and show people like what's going on in my office, I could, I don't want to move too much around, but I could do that. Uh, Mallory is asking for your CRC exam prep course. Does it contain a lot of audio video presentation? I want to be able to listen to the course while I'm doing other things. Absolutely. It does. A lot of it is just, uh, video and then there's quizzes and tests that you can take after you're you're kind of done with those. I can even actually show you. Let me take a look over here. I can give you a little preview of ooh, what it looks like. My keyboard's been acting funny too. Let's see. Here we go. I just got these a new Razer keyboard and a Razer mouse, and they are interesting. It wasn't so, this. I when I asked my boyfriend to give me a recommendation for a keyboard, I'm like. I want something that doesn't have a lot of sound and this was not supposed to, this was supposed to be like the most silent mechanical keyboard there is out there and it's still very, very, very clicky clacky. But let me, let me show you a little bit. And yes, Syed, I do see your question and I will get to it in a second. Um, I'm, I apologize, you, you know, I can't get to every single question that's coming through and I'm not intentionally ignoring anyone, trust me. <laughs> um, my focus just can only be on one thing at a time. So CRC course, I can kind of show you what it looks like. Here we go. Curriculum as a student. So this is exactly what the CRC course looks like. It has been updated for 2022 with the exception of the exam strategies have to still be updated because when the AEPC updated their 2022 exam breakdown, it only totaled up to 90 questions. And I'm like, I'm missing something here. So they 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 made a, an error in the total number of questions in the breakdown. So I think they fixed that now. If not, they gave me the breakdown. So I have to fix the slide and re-upload that. But everything else is still approximately the same. So um, when you click into the, the CRC course, there's a lot of video instruction um, some of them, I think I'm still getting some videos uploaded too. So there's office hours. So if you need to get in and ask questions, I have an hour that I make myself available every week. And like, let's see, we're starting here. There's video instruction. So that just, whoop, that just plays through. These are the ones that I had to update. There we go. So you can see it's just a lot of me, just like on here. It's me and then I'm doing the video presentation going through the slides. There's quizzes after that. There's CEU forms at the end. Uh, there is test tips, which you don't have on some of the other courses that are available. So it's a really good course, the CRC course. And I have the CRC and the CPMA up. COC I'm hoping to have done this year. But yeah, let me get back to Syed. Let me see. So my question, let me see if it's something that I'm able to help you out with. Victoria, AEPC is not allowing me to buy exam. When I go into the shopping cart, they do not add this. This is only with me or someone else. Unfortunately, I don't know. You would have to contact AEPC customer service with that one because I, I, I'm not able to assist you with that one. Unfortunately, I'm, I'm not an employee of the AEPC and I, I can't assist with some of their customer service issues. <laughs> It's looking like the CPC will be easier than previous. No, no. If you look at the white paper, it is exactly the same. Complexity-wise, exactly the same. The only, only difference. Less time. That's it. It's not easier at all. Exactly the same. Easier from a time component. Other than that, no, exactly the same. Oh, and oh, yeah. So this is this is something that does come up a lot. You know, I'm concerned about writing too many notes in the pages of my manuals. I know not to use sticky notes. So you're ahead of the game on that one. You know, not to use sticky notes, staple paste, anything like that in there. Um, 
but you're worried about putting notes in wrong places or getting in trouble during book check, any guidance on book check? Yeah, so that one can be, it can be a little bit tough because what happens is, so let me, let me back up and talk a little bit about the exam process and how the in-person exams are structured. So the AAPC has local chapters. So if you go on to, and I think you have to be a member to access the information on, on the different local chapters. So if you go to my chapter, where is it? Let's see, networking. It's under networking, find a chapter. You can find a listing of actually all of the different chapters that the AAPC has you are automatically assigned whatever chapter is kind of closest to you, but you can reassign yourself. Like maybe um, I've had instances in the past where I worked in Reading, Pennsylvania, but I was assigned to Allentown. So I could switch myself over to Reading since I was already working over there. So you can do that. Um, the lost my train of thought. Oh, so the chapters are run by volunteers. So every October we say, hey, we need people to fill, fill president, vice president, secretary, treasurer, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And those volunteers set up all of the AAPC examinations. So the first proctor for all the in-person examinations, unless you're going through an independent instructor that's able to proctor as well. But in most cases, they're run by the local chapters. So someone who is an officer of that chapter has to be the first proctor and the second proctor can be any other AAPC chapter member. So they borrow space from the hospitals, from the schools, from hotels, whoever. And those are the people who are going to proctor the exam. So depending on how experienced they are, depending on how well they know the regulations, some of them are a little more strict than others, um, maybe because they know the regulations a little bit better. Um, so you will hear that there are differences that some people say, oh, well, my proctor allowed me to do this and my proctor allowed me to do that um, because of just those, those differences that you might wind up getting a, a proctor who's not as experienced. But let's kind of look at what the official stance is of the AAPC as far as the exam notes. And they had social hour it's a couple of days ago. And Ray Jimenez was talking about that, how kind of the intent of being able to write notes was not to write huge passages of information like like supplementing a ton of information, but just to keep kind of like daily notes that you would have as you're working as a coder, your normal highlighting and and uh, clarification definitions or directing your you to other things that you might forget as you're coding, like, oh, don't forget to use this add-on code or don't use this add-on code for this. So let's take a look here uh, at their exam FAQs. So, Essentially, the, the big guidance that they give as far as what not to write in your book is don't write huge long passages of text. Don't white out anything and write over it. So that's kind of here. What year's book should I use? What is allowed in our books? And this is the information. This is right on the AEPC exam FAQs. It says handwritten notes are acceptable in the coding books. And this is different than AHIMA. That's the other thing. AEPC and AHIMA, different. Handwritten notes are acceptable in the coding books only if they pertain to daily coding activities. You cannot put questions from the study guides. You cannot put questions from the practice exams. You cannot put questions from the exam itself. So if you took, you're taking the exam, don't write the exam questions in there in case you, you know, would not pass and take it again. And you were like, oh, well, I already have the exam questions in there. You can't do that. You can have tabs in there. But you can, uh, uh, just as long as they're to your market page, you can't use post-it notes, nothing to supplement information in the book. You can't alter the book, white it out, paint, print over anything. Even the marketing pages, you can't like white those out and then write in notes on them. Nothing really supplementing the information, but definitely things that are like, like I, I feel, uh, you know, the, the bat program, which is the OG, the bubble highlight anoint technique that was developed by CCO and they're amazing. Laureen, Laureen couldn't in my dizziest days do what she does. That has been something we've used for, for a long period of time. So those sort of techniques, the bubble, the highlight, the making little notations is fine. Just as long as you're not writing another book into your book, as long as you're not writing study guide questions into your book, you should be okay. Uh, ta -da, ta -da. 
If you take the CPC exam online and not pass the first time around, how long will you need to wait before you take the exam again? There is no official waiting period. So it really is up to you and your comfort level. So maybe if you missed it by like one point and you're like, ah, you know what? I'm just going to take the weekend and refresh an area maybe that I didn't do so well on, you can take it again as soon as there's the next availability. So if you want to take the next availability in person, whenever those officers have the exam scheduled, which right now can be a little bare because they're still kind of feeling out their structure. They're still trying to find locations and set everything up and get it posted on the website in their volunteer time. Um, online, you know, whenever the next availability is, there is not a structure saying you have to wait X amount of days or weeks before you can take the exam again. It really is up to your personal preference. <sighs> oh yeah, so my, so let me tell you guys, okay, the merch, the t-shirts. When I started my merch shop, YouTube has certain integrations that they will integrate what they call the merch shelf. So in, I think at least desktop, it might be in mobile underneath my video here, it might show like some of the merch that I have available, t-shirts and mugs and stuff. For a while, the only place they would integrate with was Teespring and Teespring was fine. Uh, but now they integrated also with Spreadshirt and Spreadshirt has a lot more availability. They have a lot better customer service than Teespring did. So a lot of YouTube creators are getting off of Teespring and getting onto Spreadshirt. So there should be on the channel, a link there to where it says shop. Let's see here, your channel. Yeah, so there's a couple ways you can get to all the merch that I have. And there's some some designs that I made a while ago and realized I didn't even have on my shop that I that I put up. Um, and some new, like the, this is a baseball tee and it is so comfortable and long. I love it to death. So you can get there now from the store here and there's some great new offerings available there too um i actually just got one of the mugs and i got which is the one that i just got here i think it's the this this is what an awesome medical coder looks like and it's in the like the gray one it's so cool but you can get it through here and it's also on the website too i could type in my clanky mechanical keyboard yeah, so if you go here, I believe I updated the links here. So the merch store will head over to where you can buy all the new merchandise. And I really, I really like some of the new stuff I was able to put up on here. Yeah. And I have colored bugs. They have colored bugs. I'm so excited. I'm so excited about this. So yeah, there's lots, lots of new merch that just dropped this month that's available really, really cool. Very excited about that. Very, very, very excited. Let's see. Hey, Alanta, I am so excited that you were able to grab the live too. So yeah, bought your review and studying for your CPCs. That's fantastic. Good luck to you. Very exciting. Um, so as far as how can someone contact me and reach out to me, unfortunately, you know, I, I, I'm not really able to be contacted right now. I, I would love to sell consulting services to people who need help, but I just, I don't have the capacity right now. I'm working on a, a rush project that I have to get done. I have video content I need to make. Uh, I have to deal with a lot of things that are going on with my kid. My house is an absolute disaster area right now. So it's not that I don't want to, but there is a enormous, enormous volume of people that are trying to contact me right now. And I unfortunately just, I just don't have the capacity to get to everyone with everything else going on. I am toying with in the future and, um, I don't like to promise anything anymore because one of the things I hate to do is over promise and under deliver. But, uh, I have considered in the past doing maybe like a, like a Zoom group session, like, uh, you know, limit it to maybe 10 or 12 people who want to do, who want to talk to me, they want to bounce ideas off the head, off the top of their head, and maybe do like a we meet every week for four weeks type thing. And since it's like a group of people, it won't cost you as much as it would get to have to be for me to do individually. But I have so much on my plate right now. Um, I have to finish that last section for the CRC update because I have to update the quiz breakdown video. Um, I have to get my COC course up. 
Um, I want to get a CPMA review done. I have to, some, some, just a lot of other learning packages that I want to get together on top of making all of my video content. And then, you know, uh, I started that second channel now where I'm kind of doing personal stuff, talking about my business, talking about just general things that I want to talk about that are not related to medical coding. And yeah, I, I apparently put everyone in a huge panic the other week because of, of that video that I made where I'm like, oh, canceling. I'm like, what's the, the future of Contempo coding? Is it going to be canceled? Uh, and a lot of people, I guess, didn't watch the video where I said that I'm just not, instead of making two videos a week long ones, I'm only going to make one and then I'm going to make some short form content in the second channel. And they're like, oh, you're going away. And I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm not going anywhere. I'm just uh, changing, changing some of the patterns, I guess. Marissa, thank you. Um, oh, wait, wait, Mallory. So happy belated birthday, Victoria. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. So I spent, uh, last weekend kind of doing my birthday celebration. I went out to Disney world with my daughter. We had like a long weekend over Martin Luther King day weekend. Really awesome. Uh, we went to magic kingdom and Hollywood studios and universal and I finally got to meet in person Tony L. Holmes. I was so, so excited. Tony and I have been, been uh, good buddies for a while. You know, one of those people that you just met on the internet and we wound up, you know, hitting it off. So yeah, I'm really excited. I was really excited to do that. And then my actual birthday, <laughs> my actual birthday, I waited to the last minute to renew my driver's license and got there and they said I didn't have the right paperwork for my real ID and it was just a big old mess big old mess. So when do I think I will have the COC course ready? I really wish I could give a time estimate on that. Unfortunately, I can't right now. Cause again, I don't want to say I'm going to have it done by a certain date and then not have it together by then, because I just have so much going on. I have, um, this contract project that I'm working on that I want to make sure that I finish up and then some updates I need to do. <sighs> a lot going on. A lot, a lot, a lot going on. So yeah, I'm I'm hoping it's not going to take terribly long because I'm going to be doing the accelerated for like the CPC2 COC. And I'm still working out what materials I have to provide for that and everything. Elizabeth, congratulations on passing your RHIT. That is a huge, huge accomplishment. Wow, that's fantastic. Congratulations to you. I'm excited. Do I have a video for tabbing the 2022 books? I do not. I have one for 2021, I believe. And I don't think there's going to be any differences between them because the chapters are exactly the same. The guidelines, you know, the guidelines change, but how you tab them doesn't change. So that video would still be pertinent uh, for the current year. And I do, I do have it. I just, there's no need to make one, I think, for 2022 specifically. Um, I am going to put together some more CPC 2022 stuff just because there has been some changes to the structure of the examination. But yeah, so if you go to the, if you ever want to find, like, if I have a specific video available on a topic there on the top right hand corner here is this search button. So you can type in here like tabbing and it'll get you to the tabbing video. So this one was made a year ago, but it still is pertinent because, I think at the time, I think at the time the ICD-10 book maybe didn't have chapter 22 yet, but I even told you like, here's the extra tab that you'll need for chapter 22 and just stick it on there. Now, some people have different preferences as far as how they want to learn to tab. Um, my video is more of an abridged version. I don't, I don't make you sit there while I'm literally like sticking everything on. Some people want to like literally sit there for the hour and a half, two hours and stick everything on, but mine kind of speeds past it. So you have to, if you want to follow through, like as you're doing it, you might want to pause the video and then do your tabbing and stuff. So. How many times a day do you query the physician about their documentation notes? So when I was doing day-to-day -day coding activities, uh, maybe a handful, it depends too kind of on where you're working, your relationship with your providers, and even what type of coding you're doing. You know, my good friend, Brian Kui, he works in inpatient coding. And I hear him talk a lot about the queries and how he's had certain organizations that have put quotas. They're like, oh, we want you to query the providers X amount of times a day. Um, me working in professional fee coding, I would only query when there was something that either the information was a mismatch, like maybe they had 
uh, right side in the description of the procedure. And then in the, the actual body of the operative report, it said, you know, the opposite side, um, or if I needed information to get to a more specific code. Um, there are places that you'll work where because they are just very productivity driven or because of just the way that they're structured, they kind of discourage you from talking to the providers or you might have to give it to someone else who talks to the providers. So it really, really does depend on the environment and a lot of, a lot of different factors. No, 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 no. Do I have a video on the effects of gaps in coder titles like coder one to admin assistant back to back coder that specifically I don't think I do. Um, not all organizations have the like coder one coder two coder three structure everyone's structured very, very differently. Chris Sawyer is asking for the CPC exam. Do you notice that questions throughout the AAPC course such as quizzes chapter tests and practical apps repeat on the exam. I feel like once or twice, I've seen some questions on an exam where I'm like, I, I feel like I saw this in a study guide or in one of my practice, you know, tests or something. Um, but it could just be that it was like extraordinarily, extraordinarily similar. From what I understand the way that the questions are developed. So let's say the AAPC has, hey, Ed H, thank you for becoming a channel member. Dancing SpongeBob. Um, from what I understand, they basically hire contractors, SMEs, which subject matter experts, um, or various coders and say, hey, like, okay, we need a bunch of questions for professional fee coding. So they just develop questions. They don't develop like, it's not specific, like you're doing exam questions, you're doing study guide questions, you're doing curriculum questions, they just develop questions. So they will level them like, beginner, moderate, advanced, so that they, they have them structured that way. So like if they're putting together a study guide, they might have an appropriate mix of them. They don't know where they're going, the people that develop them. Some of them might go on the quizzes. Some of them might go on practice exams. Some of them might go in the curriculum itself. Some of them might go on the actual exam. So there's just a big old bank of questions that go everywhere. So it's possible that there might be like a repeat question in the test bank somewhere that a question that's on the study guide might go on the exam. Um, but what I see is there's a lot of questions that test the same, very same concept. So it almost seems like it's the same question because they're testing you on, do you know this medical coding concept? Do you know that if a patient has um, hypertension and kidney disease, that there's a combination code for that? Do you know, um, you know, uh, how to calculate the margins for a lesion and, and calculate the uh, correct c size for coding for the CPT code for that in the integumentary system. So very, very similar concept. Sugar Plum members. Do you know how many members I've got? Oh my God, you guys. In the past week, I've gained nearly a thousand, nearly a thousand, like just under a thousand new channel subscribers. I, I'm blown. My mind is blown, completely blown by that. Um, we're actually almost at, did you, oh my gosh, what are we at now? We're at 40, I'm at 48,500 subscribers in the next two weeks. I will be 50,000 subscribers. I will be halfway to getting the silver play button. I'm told statistically it should be like spring of next year. I'll probably hit a hundred thousand subscribers, which is completely completely insane. But I am so thankful for all of you that have come on here and found my channel. I I love that you share the information with your fellow coding students, with forums, with Reddit, with, you know, the Facebook groups that the teachers are coming in and going, hey, you know, I'm, rec I'm, I'm recommending it to their students. I'm like, it's just astonishing. Yeah. So I, I think I am going to do a giveaway for 50,000. I think I'm going to have to do some fun quizzes and a giveaway. I haven't figured out exactly what yet. I have not figured out exactly what. But I'm certainly open to ideas if you guys want me to give away merch, if you want me to give away a couple of like free courses, um, if you'd rather me send you an ebook. So I have to set that up and I have to actually have to make sure that I set up the, uh, the regulations correctly because there are certain ways that YouTube wants you to, to disclose when you're doing a giveaway. This is the biggest live that I've done in a while. We've got 
it's going between like 80 and 90 people in the live. And if you're if you're just coming in now and you haven't already, please make sure that you hit that thumbs up button that helps boost me in the algorithm so that others can find the live stream as well. Yeah, coding books and free courses. I'm always funny about giving away coding books themselves because if I'm like, hey, it's a free CPT book and you already have a CPT book, it's not much of a not much of a, <laughs> of a prize. <laughs> but I do, I love giving the questions. So we have to, I have to put together questions, the interactive questions. And definitely, yeah, I'll have to figure out what, like, what, what to give away for everyone. Definitely some merch and uh, something else, something else for sure. Do, 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 do. So what else have we got on here? Hi, Victoria. I just started a new position as a diagnostic radiology coder. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Do you have any tips or resources? I am not and I do not profess to be the expert on diagnostic, excuse me, diagnostic radiology coding, but I know who is, and that is Stacy Buck over at radrx.com. So I would head on over to radrx.com and check out what Stacy has available for diagnostic uh, radiology coding, because I know she did put some stuff together. I don't remember if it's exactly courses. I don't remember um, precisely what it is. Let me hold on. I got to block a user there. Kimberly Williams, so you're interested in taking the CPMA and the CPB. I've not taken the CPB yet. Marissa has. She's actually helped develop some of the in review, some of the curriculum for us. She's awesome. Uh, the CPMA, I do have a course available for the CPMA. It's on demand. It is self-study. So um, that is available if you're ever interested in taking your CPMA. It's pretty affordable. It includes the e-textbook. If you want to buy the physical copy of the training manual, you can upgrade for like $20. Because uh, I know some people some people uh, like to have the paper books. So I include the ebook in the course price. But then if you want me to ship out one, you know, I have to cover the cost of shipping. So it's like $20 extra to ship out the physical book. What online training program do you prefer? So I have an agreement um, that I work with onlinedegree.com. I mean, there's certainly other options to go, but I work with onlinedegree.com because what they do is they have quizzes that they, I know that they only work with accredited schools and universities, which is great. So they, you can get with onlinedegree.com, you can get the right school for you, your budget, your timeline. We're actually working on some pretty awesome new exclusive stuff. And they give you a discount if you use if you use my link, go.onlinedegree.com slash contempo. If you're going to go with just like, you know, you want to get through the AEPC and you just want to do the AEPC curriculum, like you want to get your CPC, you want to get your CPB or COC or whatever. I would say you can just go to the AAPC and buy their training. They have payment programs that are awesome as well. But if you want to get something through like an official college or university, because online degree only works with accredited schools, you can check with them as well. Get back into my comments here. Laura, I'm a student and I'm taking the CPC in March. Do you have any tips related to e &M? I do. And yeah, I think I even I even fixed this up a little bit. So I have two great options for e &M, and they're very different. So I have a free option and I have a paid option. If you need, just need some free resources, let me tell you, on the channel website, the main page here, if you scroll, I've got like playlists available so that when people come to me and they're like, hey, I need tips for the CPC exam, I'm like, boom, right there. Binge worthy content. You can just sit there all afternoon and watch all my tips on the CPC exam. Um, and when people come to me and they're like, hey, uh, I, I don't know anything about medical coding. I want to know where to start. Like, boom, here you go. Here's the playlist. And I have one for EM. So if you want to learn EM coding, this is the history exam medical decision making components for those components that are for those. EM codes that are still based off of history exam medical decision making. Um, I talk about the updates, there's case studies. And then I, I recently even started doing these videos where I break down the different office visit levels and we kind of talk about them. I talk about laminates. So that is all of the free, free completely. You can watch them here on YouTube for free. I love if you binge them because I get, you know, a couple of cents every time you, you watch a video on YouTube. Um, 
And then I also have a paid option as well. So on, on my website, contempocoding.com, I have a resource where you in this different, it's di not the same content that's on YouTube. It's different content. Some people get confused about that. They're like, why am I paying you for stuff that you go through on YouTube? I'm like, well, this is, this is different availability. Um, so on the website here, there is evaluation and management. And there's actually, if you guys are interested, I have 20% off all of my on-demand courses through the end of this month with this coupon code, including the ENM course. And that goes over the scoring levels, history exam, medical decision making. We go over some case studies and you can, if you're already certified, you can get CEUs. If you're not already certified, you can't get the CEUs. But that's all available. And also, yeah, I have some free CEU offerings on here too. I need to get some more of those, but oh my gosh. Like I just keep growing my list of things to do for myself. Um, so yeah, Chris Hoyers, this is a great question. Is the coding field getting flooded? I'm reading a lot on the AAPC forums that people are having a hard time finding jobs months, even years after getting CPC certified. What do you think? So I'll tell you what. Um, I think I don't think this is exclusive to medical coding. I think this is true of basically any industry. I've known people who have gone for, you know, de bachelor's degrees, bachelor's degrees in English or biology or zoology or archaeology and never found a job, and they wind up working, you know, at a call center somewhere. I don't think that's exclusive to, to medical coding. I think it might be a little bit more prevalent because there are so many places out there in, you know, these, not to name names, magazine advertisement organizations. You've seen them in any women's magazines over the years saying, oh, in just three months, you can train from home and be a medical coder and you'll make $50,000 a year and you can watch your kids while you do it. And, and uh, a little bit of hyperbole there. Can that happen? Absolutely. Is it common that you just take this three month magazine course and make $50,000 a year immediately after? Unlikely, not completely out of the realm of possibility, but it does, it does uh, you know, not, not as likely. Um, I feel that people that who have gone through a, you know, technical program training or a college university training, or maybe they have some healthcare industry uh, capabilities prior to becoming a, a medical coder have a, a, a more higher chance of, of landing a job right away. I personally know people who have gone through the magazine ads, who have gone through the kind of fly-by-night schools, and, uh, excuse me one second. And, um, then they search for jobs for maybe a month and then realize they weren't going to be able to find jobs where they could watch their multiple children at the same time and gave up and they gave up. So who knows if out in month three or four, they would have maybe found something or if maybe they'd have been willing to go on site or find alternative childcare, they would have been able to find a job. So um, do I, it, it is a popular job. So it, it can be a little bit difficult. So it has to really truly be something that you want to do and you're willing to make that commitment, you know, and even just understanding the medical coding industry, it's something where the codes have changes every year. There's insurance changes every year. You have to get new materials. You have to get new books. You have to do continuing education units. So this is something where you really do have to continually make investments. And there, it, it, there are so many opportunities in medical in medical coding um, that you can start with something that is very simple. I, per, I am very proud and I'm very vocal about the fact that I only have a certificate from my community college. But I have grown into a six-figure business with that over the years after having the dedication, after volunteering at my local chapter, after doing speaking engagements on the local level and then on the national level and the regional level. You know, there's a lot of growth that you can do in medical coding with very humble humble beginnings without even an associate's degree and definitely not a bachelor's degree, although a lot of people do phenomenal with their associates and bachelor's degrees. So the opportunities are out there. Um, so are you willing to, to 
go through that struggle of that you might have a little bit more time of, of finding a job. You know, there is a lot of strategy that can improve that, your, your opportunities of finding a job, knowing how to make a good resume. So if you go actually into the video description, you need an updated resume. I recommend Project Resume, like they know the keywords to put in there. So having that strategy of knowing how to update your resume, how to get onto LinkedIn, how to connect with recruiters, what jobs you can and cannot apply for, which is why I kind of want to do a video too, where I literally just like go through Indeed and go, okay, here's a job description. Uh, is this appropriate for new coders? You know, maybe not. Like, what are the things we can pull out of that and, and help people navigate some of these terms on some of the the job descriptions? Because they can get very confusing. Um, even I was confused in the beginning when I got my CPC, and I'm like, oh, look, here's an inpatient coding position. I'll apply to that. Like, not realizing that that was not something I was skilled at with my CPC. Inpatient coding requires you to know ICD-10 PCS, and I was never trained on PCS coding. It's a whole different world. Still not trained on PCS coding. Megan's asking, in your opinion, do you think getting a CCS first is advisable? Yeah, uh, I think it's, it's perfectly advisable. Although, um, I think HEMA does have some requirements, though, for their CCS. So you want to make sure that you're in line with those requirements. So let's see here. Let's go over to HEMA's website, certification exams, uh, CCS. So yeah, I, I believe, and I'm, I'm going on the website now because I, I don't want to misspeak. So there is eligibility requirements for the CCS. So while not required, oh, here we go. One of the following are recommended to sit for the CCS exam. And it's, oh, well, I feel like this is different. Is this different? Maybe I'm not. While not required, one of the following are recommended to sit for the CCS exam, completing courses in anatomy and physiology, et cetera, et cetera, or minimum of two years experience related to coding or Will the CCA credential plus a year of coding experience, while well, not required. I feel like this used to be required. If anyone else knows, let me know in the chat because I feel like this used to be required. But yeah, so you have to apply to take the exam. So I think CCS would be a great option as well. Um, and the CCS would be comparable to the AAPC's CIC exam. So, you know, um, you, uh, Clara saying she's studying for the CCS now and she likes inpatient coding. Yeah. So in order to have the CCS, you have to like inpatient coding because they go through coding and documentation, present on admission guidelines, clinical documentation. It's definitely different than like going through the AAPC. And I'm not, I'm not always as up to snuff on the, as the AHIMA end of stuff. That's why I tell people to go check out Brian. <laughs> Hi, is there a medical coder for Canada? Which exam should I take? There are medical coders in Canada. Um, I think because they have different healthcare structures though, they, I don't think they do CPT coding there. I don't think they do. If they do, it's very, very new. But from what I understand, they do ICD-10-CA, which is the Canada version of ICD-10. Um, and I don't know what their certification exams are like because I'm, I'm, you know, I, I've not had to work in Canada. I've, you know, it's funny, I was just chatting with a friend of mine, and she says that they are, are very similar, but they just use the ICD coding. They don't do, they don't do CPT in Canada. I know globally, there have been some changes that some other countries are starting to use CPT for some of their data tracking purposes. But a lot of them, they just use their own version of ICD. <sighs> The hospital you work for does not accept AAPC certification. It's just for inpatient coding. Because I know a lot of the, a lot of the hospitals, you know, um, for inpatient coding like to see the, the AHIMA credentials, the CCS, et cetera. If you work for the provider coding section, though, of the healthcare organizations, they will accept AAPC certifications in most cases. Most cases. Oh, here's a good question. So I finished my coding program in 2016. Now in 2022, where do I start or begin with to study for the 2022 exam? Are there any free study exams out there? I think, let me check because I think CCO has something that they'll give you like a, a little mini exam to kind of get you oriented. 2016, I'm trying to think if you were trying to train on I-9 or I-10. 
feel like CCO has like a 20 question free one that they give you. Yeah, so go into Google, type in cco.us free practice exam. Here it is, free CPC practice exam cco.us. I think they'll make you put in like your email address and all that fun stuff. But they do have a free resource there. I also have some stuff. Okay, so you're trained on I-10. So at least you don't have to do the I-9 to I-10 stuff. You can also check. I have a lot of CPC prep stuff on my channel. Yeah, 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 yeah. So right here is all of my CPC exam tips. That's available for free. Um, what I would also suggest is once you've kind of refreshed and reviewed, check out, I would, I would at least get like a practice exam to kind of see if you're retaining everything. Um, so you're going to need, you know, updated books, your ICD-10, CPT, HIC picks to test for your certification exam. And I would try to get like a, a practice examination to work through as well. Um, one very affordable option is if you go to my website, contempocoding.com, I do have a review that includes some practice materials as well. And that's like $30, actually cheaper right now with a coupon code. So yeah. Is it, oh my gosh, it's three o'clock already. Well, I thank you so much for coming on to the live stream today, asking so many great questions. I think we really learned a lot today. Um, I am so excited that we are so close, so close to 50,000 subscribers that I think I'm going to be having that big party. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if I should get balloons and stuff again. 50,000 subscribers. So probably in two weeks, we'll be back having a nice big celebration. Again, definitely let me know what kind of stuff you think I should give away in, in the uh, 50,000 subscriber celebration because we're getting so close. Like I said, it's like a thousand subscribers a week I'm gaining now. Uh, and if you're interested in that second channel, definitely check out uh, my personal channel. I'm going to be posting some more stuff there in the next uh, few months about my business, uh, tips on even maybe how I do like thumbnails and YouTube planning eventually. So really excited for that. I will see you guys again soon. And until then, you just keep on coding on.